last speaker is Beth. Uh, she has come, she's, uh, I'm all over the place. So Beth also had a really interesting journey into development in Ruby on Rails. When she left high school, she joined the Air Force. Uh, and not just like a regular Air Force job, I don't even know what that would be, but she was, I love this, an airborne cryptologic linguist. So she essentially went to like Mandarin boot camp, not like the orange, like the language. Uh, <laughs> it sounds a little more stressful than just like, let's eat citrus fruit all day. Um, but she went to Mandarin boot camp for like a year and plus and learnt fluent Mandarin and then had to like decrypt things in it. So it's like all kinds of levels of crazy for a very hard language. Uh, she did that for six years. Normally I'd be like, ask her questions about it, but she's not allowed to talk about it. It's top secret. <laughs> uh, other than that, afterwards then she went to go and become an architect and realised she didn't want to do that either. She finally discovered uh, development, found Ruby on Rails, uh, did a code school in Omaha with the really, um, you know, boot camp with a Ruby on Rails focus. She graduated and found a job a week later at one of the only startups in Nebraska. She has recently moved to San Francisco where she is working at ThoughtBot. Please welcome for just the most amazingly titled talk ever, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Oh. Hello. Can you hear? Oh, you can hear me now. That's going to be very important. <laughs> So, I'm the last talk of the entire conference, which is, yeah, you know, no pressure. This won't leave a lasting memory or anything, right? Ugh. Anyway. Whoa, where'd my mouse go? Give me one second. Let's do this. I'm having technical difficulties. Give me a moment. Well, you can, you know it works. Let's try this one more time. Are we gonna, are we good? There you go. All right, now we can get started. Now let's get started, all right. <laughs> so hello, my name is Beth. Thank you, Caitlin, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I need to warn you. <laughs> So the next 25 minutes or so, you're going to encounter some poor singing, uh, too many cat gifts, and some very questionable code. Um, so uh, I've been told by a few people that one of my strengths is thinking outside the box, or as I like to call it, coming up with really stupid ideas. <laughs> so um, some of these ideas have included Feces Book, a social media website for your poo. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, kombucha, really boozy kombucha. Um, so, you know, fermented tea drink. It's supposed to be good for you, but add, add, add alcohol and who knows what you'll get. Um, so another idea I came up with is birth announcements, but for features that you release at work. Uh, I don't have a name for that one yet. There is a meowaka. A Meowaka is a US-based antisocial network for your cat. <laughs> and I actually built and released um, that to a smaller market in Omaha, Nebraska, where I used to live. It's called Omeowha. <laughs> so, um, so before we really get into things, I need to give you a little bit more background on me. Like Caitlin said, I am a developer at ThoughtBot. Um, I, uh, I have a husband, this is me and my husband, Samit. We got married in a bar to the disappointment of both of our parents. <laughs> we have cats. Uh, this is Xiaogui. She goes by kitten, because nobody else I know speaks Mandarin. And this is Gita. Uh, she, yes, we have professional pictures of this cat. Um, also, we're a multilingual ho household, if you can't tell. Um, and another thing about us is that we really like Game of Thrones. <laughs> So this was a few years ago, like right after season one aired, so I think that was like 2011. And um, I mean, you can't even tell the difference, right? It's like dead on. It's perfect. So you're probably a little bit confused. <laughs> okay, why am I showing all these details with you? And that's okay. It is okay to be confused sometimes, especially during this talk. I am confused right now. So. Imagine you're sitting at home on your couch with your partner and your cats, 
It's Sunday evening at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Central uh, Eastern Time in the U.S., and um, this comes on. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Okay, so um, that's the Game of Thrones theme song, for those of you not aware. And um, it's an instrumental score, right? There are no lyrics. Or are there? Well, there are if you add them yourself. So, <laughs> um, which is what we're actually going to do right now. So, and you're going to help me. And we are going to meow the Game of Thrones melody. Why meow? Why not meow? I mean, every song deserves some lyrics, and meowing is pretty simple. So I'm going to get us started, and then you're all going to join in. All right? Meow, 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 meow. This was a really low one for me. Okay, okay, so you get the idea, right? Um, so uh, we just meowified the Game of Thrones theme song. And we, we may have set some kind of world record, I'm not sure, like the most people meowing in a room, I'm not sure what that is. It's probably at another one of my talks, who knows. Um, but that was great, so thank you. So meowifier, the application, is just one idea in a long line of bad ideas I've come up with over the years. But it also seemed like a really interesting problem to solve. And a couple of years ago, I finally said, what the hell? And I went ahead and built it. And uh, how does it work? Well, you upload a song's audio file, and Meowifier outputs a new audio file with that song's melody sung by cats. <laughs> so I wish... I wish I could say there's such a thing as a cat choir. Uh, I Googled it, though, and nothing came up. Uh, it was all up to me to figure out. So I also, I also discovered I was not the first person to come up with this idea. Um, so in the 16th century, there's his, this historian described seeing a cat organ. Wait for it. A cat organ being played by a bear. <laughs> when King Philip II rode into Brussels. So if that's not weird, I don't know what is. And so there are a few other like mentions of a cat organ throughout history, but scholars are unsure of whether or not anyone ever actually built it. It was likely just like a hypothetical instrument, and it would have made terrible music anyway because cats do not meow on a fixed pitch <laughs> until now. <laughs> so let's do this. Um, <laughs> one thing I like to mention is that I was only about six months into programming when I wrote the majority of this program. That takes us back to the questionable code part of my talk. So, um, but as a new dev, I knew that I had some big challenges I was going to be facing. I also had m momentum and motivation. I was very excited. So I decided to go ahead and start building before I, I had any solutions really figured out. And the thing that I had going for me was that I'd already read Pooter, Practical Object Oriented, Oriented Design Patterns in Ruby by the fairy godmother of Ruby, Sandy Metz. And uh, so thanks to Sandy, I knew that I needed to make my classes really stupid, or a better way of putting it, create single responsibility classes. So, for example, you'll see later that I designed the application so that I could easily swap out the melody analyzer, because um, I didn't want the logic for my analyzers to be coupled with note converters, for example. So, I also decided that this application was going to be 100% TDD, because after only six months of programming professionally, I had already dealt with enough untested legacy code to last me a lifetime. <laughs> Uh, and if you're anything like me, uh, when you were a new dev, you may have had a hard time determining what a single responsibility actually means. So focusing on testing really helped me narrow each class's responsibility down. So anytime I found a class hard to test, I thought maybe there's too much going on here. Um, so what I ended up with was each class only took one or two types of input, like the path to a song, and was expected to return a single type of information, like the serialized melody. So, it's time to get started. I have three big challenges. 
So, one, challenge number one, finding a way to obtain the notes of only the melody from a song's audio file. Two, correcting the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. And three, creating a multi-octave library of meows. <laughs> so, problem number one, the melody. So it's pretty easy for a human, um, especially one with musical training, to pick up the melody of a song. The melody is like the principal part of a song, but every, every song you hear on the radio, radio is pretty much polyphonic, which means that there's more than one note going on at a time, like harmonies and stuff like that. So if you were listening to Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, the melody would be the part that Freddie Mercury is singing. So you know, mama just killed a man, or I see a little silhouette of a man. So that's the melody. Um, and I want to keep this app simple. I don't want any bass line or harmony muddy, muddying things up. So what did I do? Well, <laughs> compared, compared to a human brain, computers are pretty unintelligent, and the same can be said for cats a lot of times, right? So, Writing an algorithm that a computer can use to extract a melody from a song is incredibly complicated. And you're probably wondering if I wrote one. And the answer is no. I did not, I did not even try to write <laughs> an algorithm to extract the melody. I did what every good programmer does, and I Googled. And I searched for a tool until I found one that might work so that I didn't have to write anything from scratch. And it was actually really hard to find, but I did find something, and it was a tool called Sonic API. And it offers professional grade audio technology using high quality world class algorithms. So it seemed like giving it a shot. And it was close to free, so I'm like, yeah, I can do this. So I created a simple song parser class, and inside this class, I have a parse method. So all I need to do is pass the proper params through an HTTP call in this method, for example, the song file in the key, and it's supposed to extract the melody for me. And this is an example of what one of the responses looks like. Um, except imagine this like hundreds and hundreds of lines long. Uh, and this happens to be the first few notes of the Game of Thrones theme song. So let's take a closer look. So there's four pieces of data. I don't need all of them. And for now, we're just gonna focus on the first one, uh, MIDI pitch. So the MIDI pitch maps to the pitch of a note. And because only whole MIDI pitch numbers map to what we think of as standard notes on a keyboard, I had to round my note up or down before I could map it. So this MIDI pitch would be rounded up to 36. In MIDI, for example, so MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And so what that is, it's just a technical standard that allows electronic musical instruments from different manufacturers to, com com to communicate with each other. So this is where 36 lands on MIDI. Um, it's two octaves down, it's a C two octaves down from middle C. And for those of you who are musicians, I, I happen to be a pianist and a percussionist, so it helps me to visualize this on a keyboard. This is the note that is the first note in the Game of Thrones theme song. And I'm lucky that MIDI is standardized. So I went ahead and I made these constants in my note converter class. So this comes into play after I parsed my song. Uh, again, so 36 corresponds to C2. And I have a method in my song parser class that adds that standard pitch to each line in my collection using these constants. So this turns into this. And this big collection of notes turns into the same size, but now I have this extra piece of data on the end. So what's next? Problem number two. So now I need to correct the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. And a melody is gonna have notes of varying lengths, obviously. So thinking back to Bohemian Rhapsody, Freddie doesn't just hold each note for like a half second. Some of them are a quarter of a second or an eighth of a second or even one and a half seconds. It's not Mama just killed a man. It's Mama just killed a man, right? So obviously, I can't have a meow file folder of meows of every conceivable length, because that would be impossible. Um, instead, I needed to find a tool that could either cut or extend my meow to fill the proper amount of time. And 
I'm a programmer. I don't want to like reinvent the wheel. I know somebody had to already have built something like this. So I just need to find a tool online that can alter the length of multimedia files. And I am sure most of you have used this tool. It's been around for a couple of decades now, FFmpeg. Um, so the only problem with this tool was that it almost had too many options. For those of you who have used it before, you can probably agree. Um, so it took quite a bit of stack overflowing to find exactly what I needed. But I went through a bunch of iterations and I figured it out. And this is my very, very questionable code. Um, this is really a messy method that I need to refactor one of these days. Look at all those conditionals. It's very ugly. And it's hard to determine what's going on here, which is okay, because I'm going to walk you through it all. Um, so we pass in the parsed song. And that looks like this collection here. This is my parsed song. And then at this point, I need to tell you that there is a library of meow files living in my application. We'll talk more in depth about those in a bit. But all you need to know right now, there are a few dozen short audio files, each with a meow in a different pitch like the ones you'd find on a piano keyboard. And this is the part of my code that creates a meow with the correct duration. So the first piece of logic, the if statement, shortens a meow file, while the else statement lengthens one. So my ultimate solution was actually pretty simple for the short notes. When the length of the extracted note was shorter than the library file, make a copy of that file and trim the end of the file to get the correct length. So it looks a little something like this. So you can see the duration of the note is less than the length of the note to adjust. Just cut it down. And FFmpeg gives me that ability to do fairly easily if I just pass the correct arguments in. It gets a little more complicated with longer notes. <laughs> so there are a few ways I could have gone about this. Um, but what I ended up doing was if the length of the extracted note is longer than the library file, you just keep duplicating that file until it's longer than the extracted note, and then you combine them down to create one audio file. So don't worry, I have diagrams. Um, this is that logic, again, not, ne not necessary to understand it. I'm going to walk through it. But it, it happens to be one of the things on my long list of changes I have yet to make. Um, but this is how it works. So I find the number of loops, simple math, which we all know by now, right? Um, <laughs> so you take the note length divided by the file length, which is 2.46. And then I use the seal method, which returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to a float, which is 3. And so I use FFmpeg to loop my file three times. I combine it, and then I cut it down and save it. And that's, you know, that was the first solution I came up with. Now, it's not the most ideal solution, but for first go around, it was OK. So the issue with this, if you, which I went through very quickly, so you, let me kind of explain what the problem is. So if you have a meow, if you have a note that's three seconds long, but your meow is only one second long, like, ideally, you would just want one three-second meow, right? Meow. Imagine that was three seconds. But right now, the way that I've written it, it's meow, meow, meow. Not ideal. There's going to be some duplicate meows. So ideally, I would have done something like this. So I have my, my note, and then I cut my meow into three separate parts. And I have that middle part of my meow. And then I duplicate the middle of that meow a number of times, combine that meow to the middle meow together, and then cut it down to the perfect length and combine it. OK, there's, I said meow a lot. I do that during this uh, presentation, actually. I don't know if you've noticed. Um, but hey, OK, so whatever. It, maybe my first solution wasn't ideal, but my proof of concept is working, right? <laughs> Pretty cool. So. I just grab all those files and store them in an array. And then in my other, another class that I have, I combine all the files together in my song builder class, which is what I'm doing here. And what's next? Well, my third problem. So I need to create this multi-octave library of meows, and that is a lot of meows. And if you hadn't noticed, very few cats meow in like the tenor, baritone, bass ranges, so on and so forth. So where does one hire a cat choir to begin with? Like you don't. So 
I had to make my own custom meow library. And how this begins is how many of you might imagine. Um, so I start out sitting at my piano, playing a note, and then trying to meow it. Um, and I, I'm always a tiny bit flat, because you all just heard me sing. Plus, I really need to get my piano tuned. Mm. So, so that wasn't working out for me. So my next step was singing into my laptop with my, uh, like I had this tuner app on my phone. So I had like the tuner on my phone, singing into my laptop, and I think I got about half an octave's worth of notes before I realized it was gonna take forever because I'm always flat. And it turns out I only recorded five notes before I got bored. <laughs> but uh, at this point, I wanted to see if it was working. And I knew of one song that only had five notes in it. So I manually entered it into my test. My test passed! <laughs> it, but it wasn't true to this like idea I had in my head. Obviously it was me meowing, not an actual cat. Um, so I was like, well, let's go back to the drawing board back to the deep, dark edges of the internet. Uh, so many references to keyboard cat during this. Um, <laughs> so I finally found a few octaves of an auto-tuned man meowing on this free sound website. And I was like, okay, let's go for it. And uh, here's the library it, it provided me with. So. A keyboard has 88 notes, and if you're thinking that this doesn't look like 88 notes, you are correct. This is only 49 notes, which is just about four octaves worth of notes. So what was I gonna do if one of the analyzed notes fell outside the range of my meow library? Well, uh, instead of continuing my search and making another library, I was like, I'll just write some code. So I did. Um, so I wrote this octave modifier. So if a, if a note falls in one of the octaves that I didn't have a meow for, I automatically adjust that octave number. So if the note was F7, it would get adjusted down to F6. And... I think it might be even worse than when I sang. So I was like, it's not quite cutting it, you know? <laughs> so like, I took all that time adjusting my app to work with this library that I still wasn't happy with. So I finally just like, I bit the bullet and decided to make my own cat meow library. And it spans nearly the whole keyboard. There's so many files I could get rid of this octave modifier. And then look at all these beautiful meows. So, the moment you've all been waiting for. Okay. So just to remind you, just to remind you, this is what we're going for. Meow, 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 the Game of Thrones theme song. <laughs> I have some major issues with my application. There's almost like too many notes and not enough notes at the same time, and like, uh, where are the half of these meows coming from? I didn't know. So I was like, what am I gonna do? So I try again. Okay. This time, I search even deeper on the internet, 
and I find a guy who had written his PhD thesis about melody extraction. Uh, he developed a software and also a command line tool called Melodia, and it was free. And so I thought, what the hell, I'm gonna go for it. I actually had to sign a release form before the university where he did his research would send me the software. It was a little something like this. I don't know if you can read that. <laughs> like that so we can fine-tune our future research and development efforts <laughs> I am not actually sure that they ever that they ever read my form because they actually sent me the software <laughs> um, and it was like pretty straightforward I was like here's this command I run you input an mp3 file and it outputs a MIDI file and this process ran really fast like I was like yeah so I start testing it out, and I have it save these output files directly to my desktop, and so the difference between this software and Sonic API, the old melody analyzer I was using, is that this one returns a MIDI file directly. So whereas the Sonic API gave me back a Ruby hash of notes. So in order to get this working with my app, I would need to write a new class that could use the same type of notes um, from the MIDI file so I could use my existing meow library on it. But I've been burned before by melody analyzers. So before I even wrote the class, I was like, I was gonna listen to this output file. Wait, hold on. Okay, so I'm, I upload this file to like this MIDI analyzer online. really hard to do for free. Um, <laughs> this is Melody, this is like Melodia in action right here. This is like a, a visual representation of it. And so blue, if you can see that, blue is the frequency that the computer estimates the melody to be, and red is the actual melody. So you can see like Melodia is really good at jazz, which nobody cares about. <laughs> like really bad at everything else. <laughs> so the takeaway from this, don't trust APIs. <laughs> um, and don't invest time on something until you know it's gonna work. So I am not too happy at this point. I decide for now I'm just gonna stick with Sonic API and hope they improve their algorithm. So I, I get this. <laughs> So, is it perfect? No. Far from it. Um, but, you know, I'm not getting paid for this, so. Someday, somebody's going to release a better or cheap melody extraction tool that um, will actually work. Um, so maybe I bit off a, a little bit more than I could chew. But um, the idea is still salvageable, right? So, so what next? Well, pivot. I am going to pivot just slightly. Um, Shazam, literally. Okay, so Shazam, like that song identifier app. So what if I use an audio footprint analyzer tool similar to Shazam to like reverse figure out which song somebody uploads to Meowfire. And then I have my app scrape the internet for an existing MIDI version of that song and Meowfire using my Meow library. So I wanted to do a proof of concept. Again, with MIDI files. So why MIDIs, especially after like the Melodia MIDI train wreck thing? Well, they were train wrecked because melody analysis is hard, not because MIDIs are bad. MIDIs are actually really great because you can use something called a sound font on them. And sound fonts are exactly what they sound like, but instead of decorating a text like a regular font, uh, sound fonts decorate the pitch of a note in a song. So if I have a cat sound font and a MIDI file, maybe I can get a better product. Like I can skip the melody analysis part for the time being. 
So I did some MIDI research and read everything I could get my hands on, and I tried again. And I did another proof of concept, and I created my own sound font for meows, and... plan them, a lot of times actually, but hey, nobody else needs to know that unless you publicly tell hundreds of people at a time. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening to my meows. You can find my uh, slides on speaker deck. Uh, keep an eye out. I will hopefully be releasing Meowifier sometime to the public this year. And uh, you can reach me at all of these places. Um, <laughs> phenomenal. Beth doesn't know it yet, but we're going to be best friends now because that was amazing. <laughs> Just accept it. Um...